Bill DeFoy. Welcome back in here to News Junkies. And with us this time is the very lovely Michelle Wilson. Michelle, good to have you with us. Thank you for having me again, Bill. <laughs> it's always an honor to be here. I tell you what, we have talked about in the past a lot about identity theft, and this goes from a number of different levels from corporate identity theft, medical identity theft, child identity theft. But today, a topic a, a little bit different. We're going to be talking about a sandwich generation. Now, when I think of a sandwich, I think of ham and cheese or, you know, pastrami on rye. But that's not what we're talking about. So, Michelle, kind of give us a definition as to what the sandwich generation is all about. Well, Bill, let me kind of start with a story here. Let me just ask you a quick question. All right. You know, if your mom, um, you need to help your mom with medication because she was ill and you needed help her with her meals. And let's say you had a father who was also, you know, aging. And then you had a son who maybe was sick and uh, an older daughter who needed, you know, a drive to, the, to college. And, you know, and then you had your work responsibilities. Well, Bill, that was kind of me in the last few years. And the sandwich generation is really, it's like someone um, in the probably in their 30s, 40s, or maybe even their 50s, who are taking care of their aging parents and have children to raise and have to go to work. So they feel like they're squeezed, they're sandwiched in. And, um, you know, it can be an overwhelming, stressful feeling. And, um, you know, I came uh, to this sandwich situation really the concept of it a few years ago when I read about it online um, there was a woman named Carol Abba who's really been the forefounder of this and the research about in the 1990s that the baby boomers are actually experience, experience, experiencing this uh, phenomenon. <laughs> well I know that in years past when my parents got up in age and being a single dad you know went through a divorce uh, the wife had the kids but then I'd have to have the kids at a certain time and taking care of those responsibilities, but I also had a dad who was sick and mom getting up in years, then dad eventually passed away, then mom remained, you know, to survive, and as long as she was alive, I was, so I can relate to some degree what you went with, and I know that you've had a son that has had some very serious medical problems, and thank God he's doing better, and you've also had ailing parents as well. Tell us about that. Well, as I said um, earlier, I had uh, my son who's 12 now actually was diagnosed with a really rare medical condition around six years old. And, um, you know, he was hospitalized, gosh, I can't even tell you how many times in one year, I think last year seven times because of just of his illness. And, um, you know, actually I had moved back to help my mom with my sister who was disabled since birth, she had Down syndrome, and then she was came to a point where she had seizures and she couldn't feed herself and couldn't bathe herself. She was actually bedridden, and during that period of time, I saw my mom taking care of my sister, and then she wore her body down, and then she was diagnosed with cancer. So really, we had like three uh, generations in the home that were sick. You know, my my mom and my sister, and then my son, and. Um, you know, at that time, I didn't even know I was going, what I was going through, you know, it was just through prayer and just, um, you know, my business, I, I learned to just really have a positive attitude, but I didn't have really the idea of what was the manifestation of what was going on, you know, until my mother passed away about a year ago, and then I, I had this down syndrome going down because I was tired, I wasn't getting enough rest, and I found that I had to ask for help just because I just was just exhausted from all the care over those few years. I, I would imagine that you would be exhausted and that you went into that downward spiral. How did you wind up coping with all that was going on? Because, you know, you have a child to take care of, you were dealing with your mom, uh, a sister, your dad. I mean, you had it all, plus you were handling your business. Well, you know, one thing through my business, um, I've really learned about having a positive attitude. You know, I do a lot of coaching and, um, you know, I read a lot of books on just inspiration and motivational, so that helped. And then really spirituality, you know, I just really had to pray a lot. <laughs> and I get my, th my strength through, through Jesus and just really through a lot of prayer and faith and hope. And then my parents, you know, they raised me just always that we were just really a family, a close-knit family. So we always took care of each other. So I didn't even think twice when that happened. And, you know, just 
the support of my family and friends, you know, just always calling and just giving me that support of, hey, it's going to be okay. So that's how I got through it, through it. Um, you know, and then when I started reading about the sandwich generation, there were some tips that I'm like, oh, wow, if I would have known about this a little bit sooner, um, you know, maybe I could have coped a little bit better. But, you know, we all go through our journeys, and that was my journey, so. Well, that, that <laughs> begs the question for those that are watching, what are some of the tips that you can pass along to our viewership that would be beneficial in scenarios just like this? You know, I was recently reading that there's like 44 million um, families out there that are going through this now. And when I was going through it, I felt alone. So the first thing is, you know, just reach out because there are uh, organizations out there, you know, just Google the Sandwich Generation. And um, there's actually a website called the Sandwich Generation that was founded by Carol. And um, just learn about it and reach out and talk about it. I know for me, I didn't talk about it that much. I just kind of dealt with it, you know, but I think just talking about it will help you to understand that it's, it's, it's okay. Because there were times when I felt guilty because I wanted to, uh, you know, be there for my mom, be there for my, my kids. And then I know I had an out of town a meeting that I had to go to and um, just feeling guilty all the time because I just felt like I couldn't do it all. So, you know, just finding that support that, you know what, it's okay to feel guilty, you know, don't feel guilty, it's okay. We can't, we're not super, super, super human, but at the same time, you know, you do what you can. And then secondly, you know, I, I made some choices um, financially because at that, during that period of time, I really couldn't work. That's when I launched my business and I, and I um, went through my retirement. So I would suggest, you know, don't do that. <laughs> Go through your retirement. So I say seek out professionals, you know, get some legal counsel, get some financial counsel from a financial planner and even insurance folks, you know, those are good professionals to go to. Actually, I work with a, a network of people and that's what I've learned that there's other ways that we can deal with this through uh, insurance and through finances and so forth. So I really suggest not to use your retirement to fund, you know, to live off of because now I feel like I'm starting over that now I got to build up my retirement fund. So I'm just really learning from my own, own mistakes. And, you know, just really take care of yourself. Um, during that period of time, I didn't get enough sleep. And, and so towards the end, I really had to learn how to take care of myself, you know, go away for a few days, get some rest you know, eat right and because uh, I had gained some weight and so forth. So those are some of the tips I would say that would be helpful going through that. And probably to the outsiders that were looking at to what was going on, they probably saw this image of Michelle having everything together, but that really wasn't the case. You're right. It really, you know, people, I, I can't even begin to describe sometimes when I was um, go back of like, I don't even know how I did. I know I did it because it was God, but yeah, I had to go out and you know, when you're running a business, you just gotta be always smiling and positive. But on the inside, I felt like sometimes, you know, I was falling apart because I didn't know what to do. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, um, but then I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for that, that moment because now I feel like I can handle anything because if I got through that, I mean, everything else is kind of like a piece of cake for me. But, you know, I would definitely suggest, you know, just find someone that you can confide in and just talk to. It's okay, you know, to feel um, bad or, you know, discouraged and so forth. Are there support groups out there for people? that are in the sandwich generation. There are support groups out there. And um, I said the, the really good website is called the Sandwich Generation. Um, this woman, like I said, Carol, she had been 1990. She, it was like her first experience and uh, she has so much uh, valuable uh, content on her website. And she actually has a, a, um, a uh, plan that you can, it's actually a survival kit, you know, on what to do, you know, when you're going through that. So I think that's a good research. There's a lot of tips. I mean, I would say Google is, is probably the best place to go right now for the, gen, the uh, sandwich generation. I'm actually learning more about it too, because like I said, I didn't really know about it until the, to a few years ago. And so I'm kind of reaching out too, just to learn more about, um, you know, about the support groups out there. Well, respond to this statement that and I realize that this is going to probably sound a little bit narcissistic, but in order to help others, you've got to take care of number one first. Absolutely. I mean, I saw it firsthand with my mom. My mom took care of my sister since she's since she was born, you know, and towards the end, um, 
my mother just wasn't getting enough sleep and she was just uh, you know she would she was kind of controlling didn't want anyone else to take care of my mom you know my sister she had to have it a certain way and then I found her get sick and then she couldn't even take care of my my sister so really you do have to take care of yourself I think that's the number one because it's kind of like when you're on a plane you know they say when the oxygen masks come down you got to put it on first and then you put it you know then you give it to your kids because if you don't then you're not able to take care of them and I, I really saw that firsthand so um, through that experience you know I really do my best to take care of myself and I've seen you do that I mean you went earlier this year on a trip to Cabo just for some R&R &R to break away and you enjoyed yourself you know what it took me three years to figure that my son who has the illness goes to a special camp every year and there's doctors and nurses there that take care of him so I know that he's safe and I used to work through that those times those few days when he would go to camp and this year was like my first year is like aha that's when I should be going and having some R&R &R. so you know I did I took a trip that was close enough that I was able just to relax I didn't work I said I wasn't going to pick up well I did pick up the phone once but you know my whole goal was just to shut off the phones and just really take some time out you know just for a few days just to rejuvenate and energize myself with the events leading up to your trip mm -hmm. did you at all feel somewhat guilty about leaving Jovan behind and going away for for Michelle I did because the day that I left I was usually all these years takes take him to camp you know I'm the one who drops him off and makes sure he's safe and you know he's 12 years old and he's getting older but his sister had to take him this year so I really felt guilty that I couldn't be the one to take him to camp but I know in my heart that the doctors I mean he goes to the the same doctors that treat him are at this camp so I know he's in, in good hands but it was just me I was the one who always did it so I had to kind of let go because I left that I wanted to leave that day and come back home the same day that he came back home so the way that the flights were that was the flight that I had to take so yeah I did feel guilty but I had to really um, say you know what this is for myself in, in the best interest of myself if I don't do this and I'm gonna come back and he's gonna come back I'm just not gonna be any good for him so yeah <laughs> you probably would have been worn out exactly and sleep deprivation is not good on any level not at all I mean that's my number one thing I work on is just getting enough sleep trying to get to bed early enough and just get eight hours and my because of my son's condition I wake up uh, about twice a night and so it's really hard for me to get get some sleep and it was funny when when I went on my trip people were asking me well what are you going to do I said I'm going to eat I'm going to sleep and I'm going to read that's all I wanted to do <laughs> that was heaven for me <laughs> and so you came back probably very refreshed and really more energized when you returned to take care of not only your son but other responsibilities that you have you're absolutely right um, with sleep deprivations you get foggy mind and I had a foggy mind when I left and when I came back you know I'm a goal setter a dream a dreamer and so forth so I just really felt really good about myself and energized after I took off that time and came back and then I just felt like say a renewed person I was really able to focus on my son and just really especially in August he was going back to school and, and everything and we have a really uh, fast-paced household you know I'm, like I said I'm running a business taking care of him and I'm still you know the things that my mom used to do for my dad I'm still taking care of my dad and so it's uh we every day is it's from sun up to sun down we're doing something so that few days back in August has really <clears throat> gotten me here today <laughs> well in the time that I've known you I know that you're extremely successful in the business world I mean you've been rewarded with some real nice things and I won't mention a brand new car, but uh, but you have been. You, you've worked hard for these things. Yes, and you know, we deserve nice things, you know. I mean, God said, you know, he is here to bless us. And, and you know, through good our works. And, um, you know, I really believe in helping people. And that's where I, I get that and get this, you know, from actually from my parents. They've helped people. For, I've seen them always giving to others throughout my life and um, just really like you said earning the car was just really a manifestation it's like oh okay I've been working hard I, I finally you know not that the car is everything it just allows me to say hey those kind of like the fruits of my labor so yeah you can look at that and say you know I really worked my tushy off to get this and you know what it, it's paid off you know when um just recently uh, I uh, wrote something I was like hey mom I did it you know she's in heaven and I remember my mom was my biggest supporter throughout my whole life no matter um, you know I've 
been up and down success and failures all my life but she was always my cheerleader and when I got the car you know it's like hey mom look you know it was really something to say hey mom all that belief and faith you had in me is like I finally achieved something that I said I was going to do because there's a lot of things I said I was going to do and didn't do but I'm just so excited that I'm on this path of success and uh, just you know earning the car is just one of my milestones but it was just really nice to be able to say hey mom look I did it well I know that with you know you talk about you know your mom believing in you and I think I know you well enough to know that you're making that same kind of an investment into your daughter and into your son. Absolutely. I'm always um, speaking life in them and saying that they can do and anything that they want to do, even though they have doubts, I really believe in them because my parents believed in me so much and I'm just so grateful that they instilled that within me. Well, I've had the pleasure of meeting both your daughter and your son and I know that they think highly of you and love you without any reservations. Yes, I mean, that's why I do what I do is because of my family, I can honestly say that um, the love for my kids, it's amazing how you see kids when they, you know, first walking into, they just grow into the people that they are. And it's just really, you know, it is rewarding to see that they have dreams and aspirations and that they're going to achieve them, you know, just because I believe in them. Well, that's phenomenal. Now, we've talked a little bit about some of the advice that you would give to individuals regarding the sandwich generation. Are there one or two other tips that you would like to pass on at this point? You know, the biggest tip is just really be informed about it. Because I, I think when I got hit with it, I didn't even know. <laughs> you know, so if you are having, you know, aging um, parents and you're, and you're raising kids, you know, talk about it among your family. Um, it just happened you know we really didn't talk about wow if you know my mom and dad get sick because I have a brother too who lives out of state and um, so it was just really me taking care of my, my parents and uh, my family so I think it's a, a discussion you know if you know you have parents that are aging and uh, you have children you really just want to have a discussion of what if you know because we don't think about it we don't think about getting sick we don't want to think about that but you know we are in a generation now that you know health care is expensive and health services are expensive and so really I think it begins with just having an open conversation and the open conversation is very beneficial because everybody is in the loop and it's probably best to keep <clears throat> excuse me everybody in the loop I, I believe so too because through being stressful you know you can have tempers going off you know we experienced that in my household you know so um, not understanding because we're all facing all these emotions and so forth and if we know what our, our our parents wishes are you know like I said we were like three generations in our household so you have three different ways of thinking you know my I totally respected my parents and I always say they're old-fashioned and then me you know I come along and my perspective is a little different and then my my daughter and my sons are different so you have three generations in one household with different perspectives and it can get pretty um, you know interesting in the household so it's really good to have open communication because it was like I said we were just broadsided and we got through it thank God through prayer but you know I just think you know if you want a happy house so it's definitely something you want to talk about. Well, the analogy that I come up with, it's like a balloon that's filled with helium. And you're just bouncing around, going back and forth. And then when this hits, all that helium has been let loose and you just feel like a sagging balloon. Absolutely. I felt that way. And I'm sure other folks feel that way, that it is a sagging balloon. And then, you know, um, in my situation where my mother passed and we had to put my mom, my uh, sister in a home, we were at this high level of caregiving. And then all of a sudden, like you said, the balloon just and then we didn't know kind of what to do with ourselves. You know, we had to re live our lives or train our lives because we had you know our family you know wasn't in the household anymore so even that was like wow we're still kind of tiptoeing around because we haven't really talked about you know what's next you know in well, our the identity has been built up your identity as an individual was being a caretaker Ex for mom for sis for dad yes. for your son and others yes yeah, so yeah you you're right and um that is a responsibility you know i would do do again but yeah you, you your identity does come to that and then especially if you've been out of the workforce for a while you know you have to think about 
I mean, I was fortunate that I was able to reinvent myself and start a new business, and I'm still growing my business, but what if someone who's, you know, working, you know, and when you're taking time off and maybe you lose your job, you know, and now I, I know some people that, okay, their, their parents had passed, and now they're ready to get back in the workforce, but they haven't been in the workforce, and so now they're, you know, like I said, their, their identity, they're like, wow, what do I do next? So you've had a life lesson. You're sharing the benefits of what you went through. And now you have a bright future with the business, with your son, with your daughter, and other family members. And it's all because you have been through this common experience together. Yes. And I, you know, really my, my words of wisdom, I, I guess I would say, you know, just really believe that it's it's temporary it's a journey and then when you come out you're just going to be so much stronger and uh you know you i believe our family has become a really strong unit just because of everything that we had to go go through together well you know i've i've always approached a problem in one of three directions you can go around it you can go over it or you can go through it and it could be any one or a combination of those things and when you go through it it just it makes you a lot stronger as an individual. Yeah, I told some people, you know, you want to go through it. You just don't want to sit in it because, you know, it could get pretty hot. So, yeah, going through it, like I said, when I was going through it, I didn't know. Uh, but now that I've, I've gone through it, and I'm still going through little things, but I do feel so much stronger, and um, I feel like I can conquer the world now. And, you know, my hope is just to really to share with others, is just to be a, a hope and support to them that, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. It might be tough now, but it's going to be okay. Wonderful, Michelle. It's great to know you and, you know, to share this story and being open to share a little bit about the sandwich generation and how people can cope with it. And you're with Premier Solutions. I would be totally remiss if I didn't allow you to give out your contact information and let people know that you uh, have solutions regarding identity theft and other life situations so feel free to give out your phone number web address and all of that kind of good stuff well my phone number is 805-304-5088 and you can email me at michelle and my name is m-i-c-h-e-l-e with one l at premier solutions international and uh you know i'm just really thrilled to be here and i thank you so much for having me michelle it's always always a delight to have you and we look forward to our next visit together and thank you for joining us, and I'm Bill DeFoy. You've been watching News Junkies, a production of the Heritage Media Group.